Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. The winner of the Big Talk from a Small Man Award is Robert De Niro. He's so blatantly stupid. He's a punk. He's a dog. He's a pig. He's a con, a shit artist, a mutt who doesn't know what he's talking about, doesn't do his homework, doesn't care, thinks he's gaming society, doesn't pay his taxes. He's an idiot, Colin Powell said it best. He's a national disaster. He's an embarrassment to this country. It makes me so angry that this country has gotten to this point, that this fool, this bozo, has wound up where he has. He talks how he wants to punch people in the face. Well, I'd like to punch him in the face. <laughs> Robert, very classy. The only thing missing was Mook. He left out the word Mook. I guess he thought he uh, he, fl- he must have had a freak out, uh, De Niro, when he did that. He must have thought he was in a Sullivan Street cafe. Well, folks, now you've had your laugh for the day, and here comes the pain. Here comes the pain. <laughs> I gave you your laugh, and I'm not kidding you. Here comes the pain. You know the big story today, right? Well, it's not a pleasant story to talk about. There's no humor in it. Who do you believe? The president who said what he said to the widow of the fallen soldier who died with other special forces soldiers in Niger? Or do you believe the president or do you believe the widow or do you believe the woman in the big hat from the Congressional Black Caucus? I mean, it's a big question because this is a gigantic story that needs to be dealt with properly. And given that the president has communications individuals around him who are so intelligent that they invite unknown local talk show hosts to meet the president yesterday on tax reform, and they ignore Michael Savage, Rush Limbaugh, but they invite people no one ever heard of, including a talk show host who stabbed the president in the back repeatedly during the primaries, I just don't know if they know how to handle this. So we're going to help the president by bypassing his amateurish communication staff, and we're going to talk amongst ourselves by asking this question and answering it. What can the president do to salvage the situation with the fallen soldier? Should he invite the widow to the White House? It's a very simple question, but it's a very complicated answer because there may not be a simple answer. Today, the president said he didn't say it. Today, the president said that the Democratic congresswoman totally fabricated what I said to the wife of a soldier who died in action. And he said, and I have proof, sad. That's his favorite punchline, sad. So I'm asking, as I asked on Twitter, who do you believe? Who do you believe? 855-400-7282. 855-400-SAVAGE. Now, one veteran wrote this on my Twitter feed. He said, uh, he's a veteran. He said, I believe POTUS, but I, but all veterans understand what we signed up for. Isn't that why we honor our veterans? I mean, he's right in a way. We don't honor them because they're wearing the uniform. We don't honor them for any other reason than we know they put their lives in the line for the country. So in the bigger sense, if Trump said something like this, he wasn't doing it in a derogatory manner. He was actually saluting the soldier when he said he knew what he signed up for, but it's always sad when it happens If you take it in the context of the meaning of it, it was not insulting. But of course, listen to me. I'm an expert on visuals. I'm an expert on visuals. And one picture, one iconic photograph used by the vermin in the left-wing media turned the public against the war in Vietnam. And that iconic photograph was that of the half-naked Vietnamese girl running down. You remember the picture, if you were alive at the time? Half-naked Vietnamese girl running, running, running down a street in Vietnam, running for American troops or after a napalm attack. That was the end of the Vietnam War. And, of course, the left-wing vermin are very smart. Remember how smart the devil really is. The devil who has given us this sickness in our society, the poison of the Harvey Weinsteins, don't ever think they're stupid. Don't ever think that they're dumb. Don't ever think that they're not clever. Don't ever think they don't know what they're doing. 
the devil took that picture, which was false, by the way, and made that look like American troops had napalmed that girl on po purpose. But it turned the American public against the Vietnam War. If one picture did it, it was that picture. So now we have the picture of an African-American widow weeping on the casket of her husband, Sergeant La David Johnson, who died in Niger. By the way, there were other soldiers uh, from the Special Forces. I know they don't count and they don't exist. Uh, but right now, he's the only one who we're talking about. There's a bigger question that you haven't heard about yet. And that is who leaked the picture of the casket and the widow. Because if you remember correctly, during Obama, it was strictly forbidden for anyone to show any pictures of a casket coming in. Did you know that? Somebody in the military leaked this picture. And since I, Michael Savage, am the truth teller of the American media, let me tell you what I think is going on. But I'll get to that in a minute. I want to know what you think here when I say to you, who do you believe, the president or the Democratic Congress fool with a cowboy hat? Now, um, here's the story. Should he invite the widow to the White House? Absolutely not. If his amateur staff, who came from selling cosmetics, uh, tell him to bring the widow to the White House, they will destroy the presidency in the, immediately, and I'll tell you why. Because what the widow will do is go on a knee in front of the president next to the American flag. That'll be the end of the presidency. That would be like invi inviting Colin Pimpleneck to the White House to express his opinion. He'll get on a knee. You don't invite her. No, I'm sorry. The worst mistake they could make would be to invite the widow, the grieving widow, to the White House. The worst. Because she will absolutely go on the knee. No, you can't do that. So what can the president do? to salvage the situation. Come on, out there in my audience, I have the smartest people in the radio business. I know that for a fact. I've known it for years. Others copy every line I say, and they say they have no. They don't. First of all, I've been around longer than them, and number two, my audience is the smartest. I happen to know it from demographics. They earn more money than anyone else in talk radio, listenership. I can prove that. Challenge me if you want. My demographics skew with higher earning uh, individuals, number one. And number two, they have higher education. So I'm asking you out there, the smart people, if you were advising the president, what can he do to salvage this situation? You got to be very careful here. Because even if the president is telling the truth and he says, and I have proof that the Democratic Congresswoman with the stupid cowboy hat totally fabricated what he said to the wife of the soldier who died in action, what is he going to do now, release that tape and prove that he's now taping everyone on phone calls? That's not going to help him either. So he's in a pretty difficult spot right now. And I want to know what you think he should do. So let's begin with the begin, not with the begin. We're not going to begin with the begin. Uh, so let them begin that begin. I remember that song from high school. I hated it. And I made me sing it over and over again. Uh, Trump denies allegations that Rep. Wilson made about his call to the widow. Let us hear the president himself and his position first in 02. Didn't say what that congresswoman said. Didn't say it at all. She knows it. And she now is not saying it. I did not say what she said. And uh, I'd like her to make the statement again because I did not say what she said. I had a very nice conversation with the woman, with the wife who is sounded like a lovely woman, did not say what the congresswoman said, and most people aren't too surprised to hear that. Let her make her statement again, and then you'll she find out. She, okay, let her make her statement again, and then you'll find out. Now, that's his side of the story. He says he didn't say what he allegedly said to the widow, the grieving widow, which is he knew what he signed up for, uh, you know, and still said, Again, even if he did say something like that, he did not mean it maliciously. That would be like saying to someone, to a, let's say um, an officer of law, a cop, dies and there's a funeral for him. And uh, the governor comes to, out there, and I've been at a funeral for a CHP officer. And what if the go governor were to say to the widow in a nice way, similar, something similar like, while Officer uh, whatever, Benjamin James knew what he signed up for, it's still a terrible tragedy. Would that be an evil thing to say? That would be like saying, okay, that's why we honor him. Because he knows every day that he goes out there when he puts on a, a vest that he may not come home that night. 
That's what he was saying. But, you know, given that the vermin in the media are evil, given that they are the devil's descendants, given that everyone in the media, without almost, without almost zero exception, they're all devils, with very rare exception, the only people who are exceptions to that would be myself and a few others, and possibly Laura Ingram, uh, because I, I like Laura as a friend, and she's the most honest person I know, and I'm probably going to, never mind, let, let that go. Well, what do you think you should do? I'm asking you a question. It's simple. Now, let's go back to another point that I raised. I teased you with it in a way. This is not something to play with here. I said that during the entire eight years of the reign of terror of Barry Hussein Obama, I do not recall ever seeing a casket draped with a flag coming off a a cargo plane from a war zone. I think they were prohibited from publishing such photographs because it would have made Obama look like what he really was. So who leaked this picture? Now, there's an answer to that question as well. At least in my thinking, as I told you, that's now a signature of mine. You'll, be hear, it, you'll hear it copied uh, a thousand different ways soon. Because everything I do, you hear it repeated like in a different voice. Now, there's an answer to that question as well. And here's the answer to that question from the point of view of the truth teller, Michael Savage. Uh, the military, uh, the men who are running the military are the real ones. They're not the fakers that were in there when Obama was there. He had, he had uh, let us use a polite word, uh, people around them who were, let's say, uh, leave it at that, not as tough as the guys that, that Trump has around them. Trump has real combat veterans around them. Obama had patsies like ushers in the Lois Valencia, uh, fakers by and large. These guys hate draft dodgers who are running the country, the, the, the military guys, the four or five of the generals. They hate draft dodgers. So you want me to fill in the uh, rest of that story here? How'd the picture get leaked? I'll let you fill in the rest of the story. That's all. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Crazy every day bigger than the day before. Madness. You can't catch a break. You can't catch a break. A week of uh, the Vegas story. A sweat job for three straight hours. Uh, adrenaline rush. Then the fires. Five straight days. Adrenaline rush. I'm packing on weight here. I'm eating. I violate my diet. I'm eating steak now. Not hurting me, but I make up for it the next day with oatmeal and, the, you know, like I do the health food thing that I wrote about. So now I got this to wake up to another one. Who do you believe? Who do you believe? Who do you believe? Now, we got to go to the play the other side. Dem rep Frederica Wilson. It's pretty sick what she says, but you'd expect that from a woman who wears a cowboy hat. Uh, as she's not, And she's not a cowboy. There's a st- saying in Texas, she's wearing a 10-gallon hat, but she's 8-gallon short. Is it something like that? I don't even know what it means because I'm from another... I don't know. What does that mean? She's wearing a 10-gallon hat, but she's 8 gallons short. Is there anyone from Dallas uh, listening to me on KLIF who can tell me what that means? It's a put-down. Well, in her case, she's wearing a 10-gallon hat, and she's 11 gallons short is what I would say. So here's Rep. Wilson putting down Trump in 03. This man is a sick man. Uh, He's cold-hearted, and he feels no pity or sympathy for anyone. This is a grieving widow, a grieving widow who is six months pregnant. This is a young woman. She's only 24 years old. She weighs maybe 110 pounds. What does the weight have to do with it? she has two other kids, two years old and six years old. And when she actually hung up the phone, she looked at me and said, he didn't even know his name. Now, that's the worst part. All right. That's not so bad. He's just cold-hearted and pitiless and sympathyless. Other than that, she was very respectful to the president. But then... You'd expect that from a Democrat uh, rep, Frederica Wilson, a member of an esteemed caucus 
in Congress, the most esteemed nonpartisan caucus uh, the world has ever seen. But I, I'm, I'm going to a bigger point, which is what does he do now? He makes one w- wrong move here and it's all over. And I think he should stop. Per- my own opinion is do not invite her to the White House. Well, no, let me give you my opinion. You invite her and the other widows or mothers of the other fallen soldiers from uh, the Niger disaster. There were four men who died in that bungled raid. Now, that's another thing. There's the rest of the story, bungled raid. Has anyone talked about the bungled raid in Niger? This could wind up being, you listen to me on this one. I know you haven't heard this yet because I tend to go behind the layers like the onion. This is the onion story. I'm peeling. I'm peeling now. And I'm not, te- I'm not tearing. I'm peeling. Here's the story. Four special forces ops go to Niger to fight one of the Islamo-fascist vermin who are trying to now build encampments in Africa, and God forbid that spreads in Africa. The world would go up in flames. And uh, there's a bungled raid, and four of them get whacked, meaning they were either set up in an ambush, someone leaked, whatever. What are the details on that raid? We don't know. That's a bigger story than this you know, than this blow-up. Not this guy's death, I'm not diminishing. But if Trump wants to put this to 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 end it, he's either got to stop talking about it and shut up that that madman. The worst of the man. That, by the way, the new devil of the media is Anderson Cooper. You know, there was a long while I knew he was a sick leftist. I, I didn't care. He was a nice looking guy. Didn't bother me. It's as though the portrait of Dorian Gray is coming out of Anderson Cooper's face. He's becoming ugly. And the worst thing for a pretty boy is to become ugly. The worst thing for a descendant of a family like his. Uh, is to become ugly. It's like the portrait of Dorian Gray. He cannot change the fact that his face is starting to show him for what he actually is. He is taking pleasure in his deviousness of attacking the country and the president on a regular basis. That's number one. Now, number two, there's only one way out of this, which is to invite all of the... uh, Four guys died. You invite the widows if they were all married, or the lady friend, or the mothers. And you have a ceremony for all of them. Now, if this lady who's uh, hurt by what Trump allegedly said is there and she goes on a knee or whatever, then she makes a spectacle of herself. And that then becomes her problem. But I'm not a PR agent. I don't work for the president. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Time is 34 minutes after the hour. Can eat my heart out over this? No. You know, this is my problem also. Uh, what do you want me to do here? I'm giving him advice. He better not appear with this widow publicly. Never. Because she'll do a, knee, a, a Colin Kaepernick, and that's the end of the presidency. Are you telling me a snake, a snake like Anderson Cooper is going to let that go? you telling me a man who was born as the bad seed of his family in my estimation, a man who inside his heart is uglier than Harvey Weinstein, who is such a masterful actor that he looks like a handsome, friendly guy, but inside probably has the soul of a Harvey Weinstein. You look at, you look at Wolf Blitzer, nice, friendly guy, gray hair, inside a Harvey, a monster. I'm not talking about the women thing. I'm talking about the soul. You think they're going to ever let this go? These are sick people. These are sick people who have destroyed themselves by thinking that attacking a president that they dislike is the news. It's not the news. It's a sickness. It's actually a sign of pathology, what they're doing. It's a mental disorder. Trump calls families of soldiers who were killed, blah, blah, blah. So he called them today. Okay, that's good. Now, what about the mission itself? We're hearing that there are four guys died with all Green Berets in a team of 12 Green Berets, but here, wait, here's the kicker. You ready? They were accompanying 40 Nigerian soldiers to meet with locals at a village close to Niger's border with Mali. 
They had driven to a local village and were walking to or from the meeting when they were ambushed by 50 fighters from ISIS in the Sahara Desert. Now, the Nigerian platoon was nearby, but not with them. That means they were set up for the ambush by the Nigerian platoon. Pentagon officials have said Army Special Forces have carried out 29 previous missions like this one over the past six months without encountering any problems. Well, this time they did. It's exactly what's going on in Afghanistan, or did go on. It's called fragging. They're getting killed by these so-called friendly uh, forces they're fighting with. And whether that is preventable, I don't know. I'm not a military guy, but I don't trust them as far as I can throw a donkey. I don't say elephant because we know we don't trust people who are use an elephant as a symbol. No, no, no. You, you work, you're working with Nigerian forces. You expect one of them not to be a member of the opposition. You're insane if you do that. So, look, this is a bad situation. That's all. So they're fighting ISIS now in the greater Sahara. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's the last thing you want is them to take over Nigeria. Great oil-producing nation. If it falls in the hands of the Islamo-fascists, forget about it. Just forget about it. Oy, what a problem. I know, it's getting cold out here. I'm more worried about the, the weather right now. It went from so hot you could die after the fires and the choking and the breathing. Now the dog bit my foot again. He's going nuts from the flame. Teddy, come on, cut it out. You're supposed to be the mascot, not like an attack dog. He sits under my desk here during a show, and I move my foot the wrong way. It's like a little pool. It goes to the toe. I just fed him a a half an Angus burger for breakfast. Not good enough. I guess he wanted the whole Angus. No, no, it's uh, crazy. It was hot out here, horrible in the San Francisco area. You couldn't breathe. The air was horrible. Then the weather fell, like dropped 20 degrees. I woke up, I put like autumn clothing on, which I normally would like. Tonight's a, like, tonight's a red wine night. I'm shifting. I already reached my saturation point with the, with the attack and the woman. I, I, I could feel it already. If I felt, if I had the limit on it, it means you already had it. You're, ready, you're flipping the dial. You're ready to, ready to see what the hammer's doing. You want to hear what the wall boards are, Rizal. You can do what you want. What do I care? People listen. They don't listen. What can I do if you don't listen to me? Stand on my head. Get a, a Clarabelle mask and a horn. <laughs> so I, you know, you listen to radio. It's funny. I don't mean talk radio, but the whole medium is built on another fo- another era in, uh, in in AM radio. Everyone screams, "Hey, how are you today? Yeah, it's the morning show. How are you out there? This is talk radio." <laughs> what are you doing that for? Why do you have to act like a moron? You're not Jimmy Kimmel. Why do you have to act like Jimmy Kimmel? Can't you just talk and make sense? People might listen to you if you actually had something to say. Now, there's the rub. When there's nothing to say, you scream, you yell, you make sounds, you pass gas on the air, you wear a wig. You know, I was thinking about Howard Stern in the wig this morning. I don't know how this came up. Have you ever known a Jewish man almost 70 who has hair like that? Is there anyone out there who has an actual picture of Howard Stern without his wig that you could send to us? Not for any reason. I have no malice towards the man. He's a giant in his own mind. Except between us. Uh, but uh, according to his own statement. But the thing is, uh, how could a Jewish guy almost 70 have that much hair? If he does, I want to know how. And I want to clone a piece of that hair. I want a piece of that DNA. That's the only reason. It's for science. If you can prove Howard Stern's hair is actually his hair and get us a lock of that hair, we can send it to a laboratory and maybe clone a little of the DNA and have a new hair growth formula. It would be fabulous. Imagine being 70 or some odd years like that and Jewish with hair, a hair like that. My mother didn't even have God rest her soul hair like that at her age. It's, it's a miracle to me. It's conceptually a miracle. How a man like that can get away with wearing a wig, number one, if it's a wig, and I'm not saying it is, and if it's not a wig, it's a medical anomaly. This will go down like an Egyptian history, like, like a pyramid, that in a certain period of time, a Jewish man came along who had the hair like this, and it never turned gray either. If you think about this, this is like the pyramid. It's like the pyramid of Cheops. No one knows how it was built. But getting back to this story, uh, do we have, do anyone have a good idea or should we move on? I'm ready to move on, I think. What am I going to do now instead of this? They're attacking Trump on this. Uh, okay, we covered it in a certain way, right? Uh, Wilson admits she didn't hear the whole Trump phone. Oh! 
Oh, now the representative with the cowboy hat says she didn't hear the whole Trump call. Uh huh. Let's hear 06. Let's hear the. Let's hear cowboy. Well, I I didn't hear the whole phone call, but I did hear uh, okay. him say. I'm I'm sure he knew what he was signing up for. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And uh, but it still hurts. Well, of course you're and, grieving. Uh, I asked them to let me speak with him. Are you joking? And the master sergeant said, "No, you can't speak with him." But I said, "But I want to speak with him." Of course you want to. Because I was to. livid when I heard that. You wanted liver. You you were eating liver when you heard. Oh, livid, livid. I thought you were saying I was eating liver when I heard that. Now he's not going to talk to you. Who are you? You're a nobody, a nut with a cowgirl hat. See, they're making a big thing here. You know, this guy died. He was a hero, like the other three guys, like everyone who gives their life for the country. And they now have to soil his memory and soil the entire military, the presidency, and drag the nation through the mud because you know who they are. That's all. What else do we have for you on the Savage Nation? Oh, come on. I can't play this one. Oh, Jesus Campos was on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Right. I'm so not interested in that appearance. The only part of that story that's interesting to me when I heard that the missing guard from Vegas, who was there at the talk, ran away, did that to do. Now he pops up and he goes on the Ellen DeGeneres show is that Megyn Kelly lost him. She was probably dying to get him. So the other girl in the media got him instead. That must kill her. Can you imagine what that did to Megan? She's on a downslide, boy. It always ha- happens to them every time. They overreach. They overreach. They think they're going to be network stars. They change their hairdos, and they die. I saw it with one other back in the 80s in the, on CNN. I don't remember her name. She was, very, she was so attractive. Every guy I knew used to watch CNN just for her. She had a certain looseness about her that was sexy. Let's put it to you that way for a newswoman. I'm not talking about Megan. She was never attractive. She was always a cold monster. Like a, uh, leave it at that, it's a family show. But nevertheless, years ago, there was someone on CNN, I think, very, very attractive woman, and guys watched her just because she was so, she had a certain attractiveness, let's put it that way. So then she goes network, they cut her hair, uh, and they made a a stiff out of her, a two-dimensional stiff. She no longer moved her body, end of her career. And then she married some big guy in the media, and then she was never seen again. I think the last she was seen was at a soccer match in the Greenwich, Connecticut with a, uh, a, a cocktail shaker inside the Kool-Aid container. I don't know where she went. Never seen again. I'm not saying that's going to happen to Megan, but she's on the road to that one. If she comes back with a cut hair, like a short haircut, that end, of, end of the road. If they trim her hair, the idiots who run the media think that that's going to do it, forget about it. The only thing that could save Megyn Kelly would be a Howard Stern-like wig. That was a funny song. Come on, it was just a tie-in, please. I'm trying to lighten you up. I don't even, I don't know Howard Stern. He's a giant in the business in his own mind between his toes. So uh, what do you want from me? Uh, We have an ex-Green Beret on Trump's comments. Am I doing what you want me to do today? You want me to talk about something else? There are other topics. We do have another Hollywood Idiot of the Day one. Let's do the Jane Fonda one. Now, remember, we need the lead-in, uh, Jim. Jim, put the phone down, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Jim's a great call screener, but there's only one man there. There should be three. So we're going to open this up. I gave out the Savage Academy Awards yesterday. They, they killed themselves creating this. I wrote it over the weekend, and then they found the sound bites. Jim, give the introduction and then play the, uh, the winner of uh, the Jane Fonda Award, will you please? Together, a double. <laughs> And now, the Savage Nation Hollywood Idiot of the Day. Are you proud of America today? No, but, but let, well, I'm uh, proud of the resistance. I'm proud of the people who are turning out in unprecedented numbers and continue over and over and over again but, to protest what Trump is doing. I'm very proud of them. She gives the fund the name an eternal damnation. She was a traitor on the anti-aircraft gun. She tried to uh, save her face a number of years ago, make believe she didn't do it. The name Fonda is now dirt in the minds of 60% of Americans because of this woman. I know she was hot when she did Barbarella, but that was 700 years ago. She did Barbarella when Howard Stern had a full head of hair. Come on, I'm not going to do any more Howard Stern jokes. I hope he doesn't get mad at me, because if he does, he'll have to mention me on the air, and it'll be worse for him than for me. 
He'll boost my ratings. So don't do it, Howard. It'll hurt you more than me. No, I'm saying she was hot uh, when she was Barbarella. Remember that? She was very, very appealing. I'm not even allowed to say hot anymore. I guess that's illegal. I, I, they say it at weddings a number of years ago. The, the groom gets up and says, when I met her at college, she was hot. Everyone cheered. Now you can't even say that. That's sexist. I got to really check my vocabulary. What are you going to say now? She was cold. She was neutral. She she was gorgeous. Sex is a buzzer goes up. Mm. When I first met my wife in Economics 101, man, was she, I don't, you wouldn't know what to say. She was um, the most intelligent girl in the class. That's sexist too. And it's also offensive to idiots. You think about it. It makes moronic people in the class feel stupid. So you can't say she was the brightest girl in the class. You can't say anything. I guess you're saying, when I met my wife at Economics 101, when I first saw her, I knew she was definitely a woman. Can't even say that? What if there's a tranny in the class? So you don't know what to say anymore. So the answer is do say whatever you want and let the others go. You know where they go. Let them go to Anderson Cooper with their tattletale. Am I running short of time here? You don't realize I'm at the height of my career right now, which is why I feel good. I got to be careful. Pride cometh before a fall. I know that. And I, I know God's waiting for the trip up. And uh, as well as everyone else in talk radio, dying to take my seat, steal my microphone, and eat my dog. I get it. What time? I do have to take a break. I'll be back. Be here or you better not be here. You better be here or you better not be here. You want to be here or you don't want to be here? You're going to listen now to the wall board? Go ahead. See if I care. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Hey, look, nothing is more essential than protecting your home. You know that, especially in times like this, right? But getting traditional home security can be a punishing and expensive task. I have a better way for you. Protect your home with Simply Safe Home Security. Ask anyone locked in a long-term security contract. They were on the hook for three years, paying $45, $55 a month. Or ask someone who's had a system hardwired in their walls. The installation alone cost them a fortune, right? Now, Simply Safe got rid of everything that makes home security a hassle. Pay attention. They make it very easy for you. No long-term contract, no obligations with Simply Safe. This is award-winning home security tech magazine, CNET. Call Simply Safe Better Smarter Home Security. Your home's protected around the clock with 24-7 professional monitoring. If there's trouble, they will send the police. This service costs just $15 a month, and all you got to do is remember Simply Safe, S I M P L I S A F E. That's three times cheaper than what the other guys charge, and no hidden fees. So protect your home today. You can buy Simply Safe at your local Best Buy. Have your home protected by tenant or visit simplysafesavage.com. Did you hear me? You're going to get 10% off if you go to simplysafesavage.com. 10% off simplysafesavage.com. I found the uh, talk show host I was talking about. I, I don't want to read her name because then I'll get sued again. She doesn't look that, She doesn't look bad years later. She was a big uh, CNN hostess. Host. See, I made a mistake again. You can't say hostess, can you, about a woman in television? Hostess? That sounds like hostess cupcakes. She was a host? You can't say hostess anymore. Like They used to just say poet, then poetess, but you couldn't say poetess after a while. The girls were also poets. Okay, I understand that. I guess. I don't know why. It doesn't matter to me. If the poem was good, but if it was garbage, I didn't care whether they were poets or poetesses. Didn't matter to me. I don't know if I want to go back to the Trump with the widow. Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to do Jesus Campos on the Ellen DeGeneres show? Are you joking? That's a story. He said nothing. It was a big nothing, a nothing. The big Lebowski. It was like a bowling ball that missed all 10 pins. So it doesn't matter that uh, that Megyn Kelly missed it. Hawaii Dem Senator Hirono says Trump has no moral core. That's funny coming from a Congress. What? Let me tell you something. Okay, let me say nothing about it. Let, uh, let's listen to this now. Hawaii Democrat Senator Hirono. Can I tell you something? Hawaii is the most corrupt state in the union, next to California. There's nothing more corrupt than that welfare state. It is the most corrupt state in the land. 
They sit around watching coconuts fall off the trees and collect welfare. And then the people who work, they hate. They call them derogatory names. There are more cars in Honolulu than there are people. And yet they, they write bill after bill about global warming and they do nothing about it. Crazy. All right, we'll go on to another topic when I come back. I don't know what it's going to be. Wigs, wig outs, wigwams. I'm not sure yet. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. I'm not interested in it. I'm not going to bark up over it anymore. It's too many times I feel like I've hit the, the plunger. And the che- che- Cheerios have come out. So I, I ended the hour last time saying, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, wigs, wig outs, or wigwams. We've already done the other thing. Should the president invite the widow? No. She'll embarrass him. Should he invite all the widows? or the or the? or Yeah, maybe. Maybe he can let it go. Can he let something go? Is it possible for once he can just move on? This now has to become a major story now for six years because of the snakes and the lizards uh, in the media, right? That's it, the soldier story. Trump says Dem rep fabricated account of call to soldiers. Widow has proof. I don't want to see the proof. I don't want to hear it. There's no recordings, according to the Drudge Report, zero. No recordings. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm opening it up to open mic. It's already Wednesday in the middle of the week. I came into work, three dead, two injured in Edgewood, Maryland workplace shooting. That'll be swept aside because he doesn't look like Timothy McVeigh. Vegas survivor who died suddenly had planned group to expose cover up. You don't want to do that again, right? ISIS in the Congo, video calls jihadists to new turf in Central Africa. Saudi Arabia, hundreds of mysterious ancient stone structures discovered on lava domes. I, that, I'm interested in that one that you can still find things years later. Uh, but I've studied it in great detail. Not, not great. I've studied it in some detail. And these ancient stone structures look like animal traps to me. I don't think that they were like aliens that came from the Bronx in, in uh, you know, and like, like built a stone wall and then went back to Tremont Avenue. I don't believe that. Right away, it's like aliens came down and built the stone structures and were just discovering them. Ooh, the aliens are amongst us. Well, they are. Look at Anderson Cooper. Aliens are amongst us. They're not human. These are, these are not full humans. These are like half humans, most of these people. They hate the country with a viciousness that's hard to imagine. A country that gives a man or a woman such a fortune, like a Jane Fonda. Her whole life is a life of luxury, happiness, uh, worship, and she spits on the country. Can you figure this out? Yes, I can. There's an answer to that one, too. And it fits neatly. Liberalism is a mental disorder. Whenever you see something that they say or do that doesn't make sense to you, you plug that in. Liberalism is a mental disorder. I'm, I'm intimidated by my dog now. He's under the table. He's like, like I don't know, he ate. I can bite my feet here. I don't like this very much. It's not cute anymore. He's getting old. Maybe he's a little senile here. There's a very, very sad story I just saw of a chimp that was dying. I'm a I'm an animal you know guy I'm an animal rights type I really am I truly as I see that it's a sad story it was on a drug I shouldn't have watched it before the break I'm getting like a sentimental old guy now I the the chimp was dying of a, a fatal illness it's over for him and it's curled up in a in a ball did you see this I put it up on michaelsavage.com you could cry for him and I don't want you to cry the chimp is curled up in a ball a fetal it's got a uh, fatal uh, it's over life's over for it. Yeah, moment dying chimp recognizes man who used to care for her. You could, your heart can get ripped out. And yet you could look at China, how nice they are, how advanced they are. They beat them in cages and eat them. 
Now it's sickening. The whole thing gets me sick. The variety of human experience is amazing to me. And the variety of societies, how superior we are to any society on the planet. If you look, you know, I love the idiot liberals. China's superior. They put their hands together in Chinese restaurants and ask for a glass of water. And they bow down to the guy who came over from Hong Kong and doesn't know why this moron is bowing to him with his hands together. Oh, thank you. Can I have a chopstick? Oh, thank you. They, they ask for a napkin. Oh, thank you. The guy looks at him like he's a moron because he is. What, what are you bowing down to the guy? He's glad to have a job serving you the slop there in Chinatown. But you look at how they treat animals in China. It is the most horrible thing to witness. They put dogs in a cage. They beat them. They beat them and then they cook them. This society is the most advanced society in the world. Never mind what the morons with the knees have to say. Let them go try it in North Korea, see how far they get. Sick of it all. Moment dying chimp recognized. So the animal's curled up in a uh, fetal. It has a, uh, you know, terminal illness. And it's not eating, not, not drinking. And the uh, care man, the uh, caretaker comes by and starts talking to the animal. And you see the animal come to life. It's sad. I mean, the animal comes to life and gives it a smile and an emotion. Don't tell me animals have no emotions. You're, you're an idiot if you say that. Go to a slaughterhouse and tell me a cow has no emotions. You ever been in a slaughterhouse? All you cold-hearted... Great talk shows. Oh, I eat those animals. We don't want any of that sentimental slop. We eat those animals. <laughs> no, yeah, okay, eat the animals. Go ahead, go eat the I had a steak last night, admit it. I'm not a vegan. I would die on a vegan diet. I could not survive veganism. I would look like Jared Kushner. I wouldn't be able to do one show. How can you do a show being that thin? It's impossible. Bone thin? A man like me needs to look like a, a samurai warrior. You've got to be thick in the gut. I don't mean fat. There's a difference between a little weight and a little girth and fat. There's a huge difference. I'm wiry underneath it. But look, I'm not trying to talk about myself as much. I got into the, I said I didn't know if I was going to do wigs, wig outs, or wigwams. I'm talking about animals now. I remember when I was young, which was about eight years ago, somebody gave me a book entitled The Expression of the Emotions in Man and Other Animals, written by who? Anyone who knows who wrote that book gets on my list for a free copy of God, Faith, and Reason. Who, who knows? Now, you're going to see this. You can't do these anymore on radio. With Google, everyone's a genius. There's no literacy anymore. Oh, I found it, Mike. I want a free book. So don't take any calls on that. It was written by Charles Darwin. And he had pictures, hand-drawn pictures of dogs and the various emotions. And before Darwin wrote that book, on the expression of the emotions in man and other animals. People didn't really recognize uh, that dogs had emotions. But I, mean, I have a dog. I have a do dog since I'm a child. They smile. They can be sad, right? So what am I telling you? Something you don't already know? Is it profound? I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. What am I supposed to be profound with every statement? I'm not, I'm not God. I'm not a prophet. I'm only a talk show. So what do you want from me? What do you want to talk about now? Animals? Let's make it open mic. I'm schwitzing in the studio all of a sudden. A heat broke out in here. I'm, I'm, I'm like through the, the whole body broke out in the heat. I don't know, maybe the coffee did it or something. It's around lunchtime. I'm, I'm going to skip it for your sake, for your listeners. Because here's the problem. If I eat during the second hour of the show, which would be a normal lunch hour for a normal person, the energy goes right from the head to the stomach and the show. So I'm not doing it. I'm going to have water and a cracker, like, if it's, like I'm at San Quentin on death row. No, that's not true. They get whatever they want on death row. So I don't know who eats a cracker in order now. But the thing is, if you've got a topic that I haven't touched on yet and it's of any interest, give us a call at 855-472. I don't want to talk about the the uh, dust up over the widow phone call. You know, already, move on already. What else is in the news? Hey, uh, Weinstein's gone. Is he in rehab? He has as much chance of being cured of his addiction uh, as I do of giving up French fries and spaghetti for the rest of my life. It's not that I eat them every day, but I'm telling you the truth. I'm addicted to French fries and spaghetti. I try to avoid them, but I fail. Same with Weinstein. He's not going to... You know, such a thing. There's no such thing as sex addiction. I read an expert's opinion on it. It is total crap. There's no such thing as sex addiction. That was invented. Oh, I can't help myself. I'm an addict. You, you can help yourself. You don't want to. That's the whole thing. Sex addict. What does it actually mean? Nothing. There's no such thing as sex addiction. The only people who admit to it are those who get caught and have to go to treatment where they meet people who are also trapped and have to go to treatment and they meet each other and they have, then they have sex. 
Where better to meet someone who is a sex maniac than in a sex, a quote, sex addiction a classroom? Nowhere. It's the best pickup place on the planet, I heard. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Quebec, Quebec bars people in face coverings from public services. <laughs> in Quebec? They're not letting them come in with burkas on? That's funny. Why not? Isn't the burka a superior costume for a modern woman? You don't have to show your... Well, if you're Ruth Bader Ginsburg, yes. In her case, I'm in favor of burkas. I know they wear a black robe on the Supreme Court. Can we start a fund, like a GoFundMe page, for a burqa, a full body covering for Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Because I personally get sick when I look at her. Why is that woman still on the Supreme Court? Boy, I hope Trump gets to put four more on that court. But we're yet to see what they're going to do. I told you that. I know many of you think that um, the new one's going to be very conservative. I see a Roberts in the making. I don't know yet. He's uh, they're, they're waiting. They're waiting back. MSNBC Mado jumps back the first play. Oh, she beat Hammer. Hmm. Well, Hammer, you know, he overplayed the Trump thing. That's why Hammer fell and Mad Cow jumped. You can't over-associate with the president and be seen as an independent person in the media. How many times do you have Newt Gingrich on as a guest? And now, direct from the Beltway, the man who's against the Beltway, it's Newt Gingrich. No, that's why I don't do guests. Most guests are boring. No, you don't want to watch guests. But you're only calling about the widow. I said... What do you want to do about that? Savage Academy Awards, you don't want to do that. All right, let's take some calls. Let's get some calls on what Trump should do to salvage the widow situation. Okay? What should he do? Andrew on WABC, go ahead. Make my day. What's on your mind? Michael, this was a setup by the sick, disgusting, deranged left, the reprobates that they are. They're trying to drag him into this. It's coincidentally the day after the uranium fiasco broke. So oh, now they can... oh the Mueller the Mueller uranium fiasco that's being swept under the rug uh, by the genius Anderson Blooper. Yes, now they could pound us twenty four seven that Trump's sick, Trump's heartless, he's a moron. The president should say when asked next, the son's an American hero, the family, the mother, the father, the wife, the children, they're all American heroes. They always will be. My heart's now and will always be with all of them, and none of us will ever forget the courageousness of their young son that lost his wife. Life you ought to be his press secretary. You'd do a better job. Are you, are you in PR? No, I'm not, but I'm a businessman, and this is what no, he... No, you know what you're talking about. You're the ty- no, you're the type of guy who could run a good PR agency in New York. That's right, Andrew. And, and put it aside and move on already. You're talking about the special prosecutor, Robert Mueller, flew to Moscow and gave the Secret Service of Russia 10 grams of highly enriched uranium in 2009. Are you talking about that story? Yes, I am. That's oh, that's not a story? Today. No, ask uh, Andrew Carnegie Mellon Blooper if it's a story. Or ask the other reliable source, Wolf the Seltzer Man Blitzer. Oh, uh, it's, it's just... It's, Do they get you as sick as they get me? Do they make you sick? Sick to my stomach. You can't watch it, Michael. You just it's like you. You know, I don't watch the news. I swear, as God is my witness, I don't watch Fox. I watch none of the news channels. But last night, I cooked a steak on a barbecue. I was in a house. We watched the news. It was nauseating. It's horrible. It's terrible. All they do is pick up the most, the pettiest points, and then they have a dumb guest. And here's Newt Gingrich. Hey, how are you? And your wife's now in the Vatican. Is she playing the trombone for the Pope? How are you, Newt? I'll be right back as the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. direction you want wigs wig outs wigwams whatever i think we covered already who do you believe trump or the uh crazy woman with the cowboy cowboy hat whatever he does whatever he does he's wrong now, that's what you get when you're an inheritance case like anderson blooper if you inherited a fortune you come from a rich family and you never worked a day in your life and you're just good looking 
and you don't have to be responsible for what you say. And because you're good looking, they give you an anchor's job somewhere on television. There are no consequences to your big mouth. As a result, you start to think that whatever you say is is genius. It's golden because the moron who runs the network hates the president as much as you do, so you think that's wisdom. I don't care if your ratings are good. The thing is it's disgusting to look upon people who are supposed to be gatekeepers of reality in a certain way for our society who are nothing but pimps in plain English. That's not a dirty word. They'd be better off. Well, okay, I'll stop right there. I'm not sitting in a bar now on Sullivan Street with a bunch of guys who would like to hear the rest of that statement. Well, they know what I'm saying. Where is Sullivan Street? It's around the corner from Ludlow Street, which is near Rivington Street, which is close to Orchard Street, which is next to Allen Street, which is near Broadway, which is near the Brooklyn Bridge. So what do you want to do? You want to talk about the treatment of animals? We can do that. Would you like to talk about the animals who are are roaming the earth right now, killing us, knocking us off because we're morons? The animals who are being let in under the guise of religious freedom, who want to kill every last one of us and convert us to their throwback religion. Would you like me to get angry? Because I'm not going to go there for you. Quebec bans Nigab for public services with neutrality law. Even in Quebec, they recognize what these people are doing to their society. Half the society knows, the other half is oblivious. And if they did know, they would look the other way out of cowardice and fear. And they don't want to be unnice. They like to be nice. One thing about liberals, they're nice. They're all so nice, except if you're a conservative loves America. Or you're a cop. Or you're a soldier, then they're not so nice all of a sudden. Or the Mill Valley Film Festival goers, morons. The the North Bay was on fire. They were sitting there applauding Sean Penn. Idiots. They couldn't take a minute out for the the fire victims. Mill Valley Film Festival. Some film festival. Oh, you get to rub shoulders. Oh, wow. Oh, look who's there. I saw a blank. Morons. Hangers on. So what do you want to talk about here? The, The soldier deal, North Korea, the dogs. I don't know if I could do the dog thing because the heartbreaking moment of dying chimp recognizing her old friend, friend that, that that's going to send you right to the, the tearjerker department. You know, I used to be in, in um, biomedical research. I got to tell you the story. I got 56 seconds to tell you my life story. I'm going to scream one of these days that I'm trapped between stop sets. There, there's the title of my autobiography, Trapped Between Stop Sets. There, there you go. That's my third book down the line now. That's after... God, faith, and, and reason, I'll, I'll do trap between stop sets. You can't develop a thought. I now need a good 12 minutes, if not two hours, to tell you about when I was in biomedical research and what I did not to kill animals. And then I was thrown out. I had no money. I lost my fellowship, and that bastard who did it to me then got cancer. I'll tell you his name, too. He said, I'm sorry, if either you kill the animals or you're losing your grant. I said, how could you do that to me? I have no money. He said, you're fired. I had no money. But I wouldn't kill even a lab rat. Would you believe that? Oh, I know. I'm the mean right winger. You liberals are far meaner than people would like to know. Tell me about it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. What are we talking about now? Well, with I guess we're talking about animals, animal rights, the crying chimpanzee as he's dying recognizes his old handler and gets up from the deathbed and starts making like ha 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 sounds and rips your guts out. When you consider how badly chimps are treated or have been treated in this in the in the world of biomedical science, if you actually knew what was done to chimpanzees by so called good scientists, your heart would break. There was never any excuse for it. Not after there was able to, you were able to do modeling and things of that nature. There was no need to inject these animals and torture them the way they were. Most of the people who went into biomedical research who actually worked with zoo animals were sadists who just happened to be biomedical scientists, but they were sadistic to the animals. I, I saw it with my own eyes. So I just want to finish that story for one minute. It's very important you know it because it's not on Wiki, this, Wikipedia, or whatever. And people say, oh, he's a right winger. What does that mean? You know what I am? You don't know what I am. Do I know who you are or your condemners? So graduate student, blah, blah, blah. I'm in pharmacology. 
because I'm interested in, you know, deriving drugs from uh, plants. Or, no, actually, no. At that time, I was in pharmacology. I went to ethnobotany after that. So I'm in pharmacology, and one of the jobs was I, I needed money. So for the fellowship, I took a job cleaning up rat crap in the lab. It was horrible. That was the job I took. Would you believe this? I remember hearing my deceased father's voice saying to me, this is how far you come in life. You're cleaning up the crap of a rodent. No, I used to hear him, you know, shortly. He said, this is what you're doing for a living. You're cleaning rat droppings in a cage. And I had to answer like, yeah, dad, that's what I'm doing. That's what I have to do. It's like servitude, you know, like two years before the mast. So anyway, so there was this little midget who worked in there, a woman midget. A real midget. Nothing against midgets. She was a midget. And her job as a research associate was to kill lab rats. She was like crazy. She would hold a rat and talk to it and stroke it and then pith the brain of the rat. And I thought it was so weird and sickening. I said, why? Elizabeth, why are you stroking the animal and talking to it before you kill it for the experiment? She says, well, it calms it down. It was just creepy. I'm sorry. All right. So my turn came. And he said, Elizabeth is going away for you have to now do what she did is piss the brain of the rat. I said, I'm not doing it. I won't hold an animal and kill it like that. That's it. So he says to me, look, you have a $300 a month grant or whatever it was, fellowship, and you're going to lose it unless you agree. I said, goodbye. I'm not doing it. He threw me out. I had no money. I swear, this is an amazing story. I wander around the building, Leahi Hospital in Honolulu. As a matter of fact, remember to this day. And I go downstairs from the third floor to the basement, not knowing what I was going to do to make any money. And I'm walking around, and I see showcases with plants, dried plants in jars. And it was interesting. Plant sample, I never knew what they were. This came from Samoa. That came from Tahiti. That came from here. That came from there. So I knocked on the door of a professor I didn't know, and I said, hi, how you doing? He was a very nice man. And we got to talking. He said, well, it's called ethnobotany. And we have an ethnobotanist in Samoa who's a Ph.D. from Harvard. And I said, what does he do? He goes to these islands and he lives with the indigenous people, meaning the locals. He asks them what they use to heal people with. And he writes that down. He collects the plant, dries it, and sends it back. And then we extract the active components of the plant. We look for a cancer cure or diabetes cure, whatever. I said, he gets paid to travel to the South Seas. That sounds good. So I went into a field called ethnobotany, which was hardly known at the time. And the professor was one of the great men. He was a he had just left being the director of research for one of the major American pharmaceutical firms in in Michigan. He was one of the nicest men I've ever met in in, in the world. Anyway, the long and short of it is I went into that field as a result of I didn't want to kill animals. So you ask yourself how life works. Do you ever really know? what the ultimate strategic plan is for your life. Do you, do you actually know what it is? Was I sent there to not kill the rats, to go there, to do this? To, I don't know the answer to that. In other words, is there some divine force that has a strategic plan for me and everyone else? Maybe you believe that. Maybe you say it was just chance and you reacted to it in a, in a proper manner. So my deplorable friends, listen to me. I ask these questions of myself on a regular basis. I'm sure many of you are thinking people ask yourself why God to certain things. And I'm not going to sell you God, faith, and reason. I'm waiting. I'm holding my fire on that book until you have a copy in your hands, which is going to be in a month on uh, November uh, 14th. I'm not going to actually read from the book until you have them. When you go to the bookstore and you clean out the shelves, then we're reading it together. And then I'm not going to stop. I'm telling you right now, you're going to get two weeks of the book with news. That's it. And then you're going to find out who I really am as opposed to what they say I am you're going to find out what I discovered when you read that book. So I I want to go back to the original question, which is a nun question, which is a statement, really, that we are the most humane nation on the planet, not only in how we treat each other in the most humane fashion imaginable, but the most humane laws, the most humane prisons, the most humane treatment of animals on the planet. Do you know that or don't you know that? No, you wouldn't know that listening to the sickos in the media who make you think you're living in a hell. Now let's take some calls, now that I got that out of my system. WGDJ, Radio Claudia, Line 4, what's on your mind? What's on my mind is I was watching that uh, video of that poor little chimpanzee. I I had to stop watching it because I would have cried all night. I, I, I think that animals operate on a higher consciousness level than we do. 
um, his little eyes, you could just see the, the, the pain in his eyes and the, the and joy, too. It was a combination of two things. Well, I, I wouldn't argue that they see that they operate on a higher plane at all. I, I don't believe that at all. Well, I think right. there's, there's no question in my mind that man is the highest, the highest of the animals. Mankind is the highest in the pyramid of animals. There's no question about that. As much as I love to protect the innocent amongst humans and amongst animals, we must admit that animals have not created the uh, pyramid of Cheops, number one, Beethoven's ninth. I mean, they haven't done such things. I think they have a, um, do you think they have a, a deeper um, intuitive sense? I, don't, I mean, banging two sticks together or a, or a pot or a, banging a stick against the cage is not the same as playing a violin, is it? Oh, no, not at all. But All right, so on a level of, of, of human intelligence, there's no question the human being is the most intelligent of all animals. I mean, I don't, I don't think we're arguing over that. But with that intelligence comes an obligation to be compassionate to those less intelligent. Absolutely. And Teddy... Whether they be... Whether they be... Wait. Whether they be uh, animals of a lower order or humans who are mentally, let us say, defective. We have to be compassionate to them, don't we? Otherwise, we become Nazi Germany. Otherwise, we become Democrats. <laughs> yeah, we could go there. Well, we, we won't go there because I don't think the analogy works. But I, I hear you. I, I Believe me, I hear you. Now, this is interesting. I just got this from uh, an email. U.S. Department of HHS defines human life as beginning at conception. I remember yesterday I was reading from the book jacket of Trump's war, and I said, okay, what did Trump promise of us what he delivers? So let me read it again. I wrote this on the jacket of Trump's war. The wall, taxes, tariffs, deportations, Obamacare, guns, military strength, schools, abortion, religion. What will the new president do? Well, on abortion, he just did a big thing. The Department of Health and Human Services has just defined human life as beginning at conception. Do you know what that has done to the witches in Planned Parenthood? Do you know what that has done to all of the evil, evil Democrats who take money from those baby killers? Those who literally kill babies for their body parts? Yeah, it's done an awful lot. And, you know, it's long overdue, by the way, that Donald Trump, by executive order, closes uh, uh, um, Planned Parenthood down. Clo close them down. And if need be, jail them for killing babies, for killing them for their body parts. It's that simple. KSFO, here's a story about animals. Now, now we're talking. KSFO, Teresa, line five. Go ahead, please. Hi. Um, I just wanted to mention... Um Peter Lang up in Santa Rosa single-handedly saved all of his animals at Safari West, holding back a fire. And if you look at the maps of the fire, it surrounded him. He did it by hooking up garden hoses wow. and fighting off a fire. Well, that's, that man is, a, is, the man is a saint, because I asked during the fires, what about the animals in, in the safari land up there? He saved them all, huh? That's beautiful. Well, there are decent, very good people out there. Most people who are in the animal world are saints, by the way. They truly are. Incidentally, I want to refer again, if it's still up on the site, I have no control over some of these things. They disappear without my knowledge because there's an automatic thing on my website which drives stories down. I, I said don't do it. It happened again. I had a link on my website. They took it down. I like to chop. They couldn't have done this to me. I had a link to the Highway Patrol raising money for them and a link to some kids who lost their house. Gone. Gone. You know, I have to manage everything in my life. Do you know how hard management is? There is not a corner of my life. There's not an aspect of my life, whether it's broadcast, website, writing books. I have to manage everything. Here it is. They lost everything in the Cal Fires. Even leukemia struck. It got moved down to the bottom. Uh, help Highway Patrol families, again, bounced down to the bottom. Now, the Highway Patrol families have now raised $22,000 of a $16,000 goal. I have to believe that my listeners had an awful lot to do with this campaign, and I want to thank all of you who have given money to the Highway Patrol or to that family of children who lost everything. I really have to thank you. And what's intriguing to me is that the local Nun newspaper, the mimeograph sheet of the Democrat machine, is glorifying some pot growers up in Sonoma or Mendocino who gave like $400 or $4,000 to the recovery. Can you believe this? And they make believe you, the listeners, to this show. And by the way, the show is a giant show on KSFO in San Francisco. Make believe you don't exist, but you do exist. And you, I want to thank you uh, for all of the families who have been helped by your money. WABC Shelley, let's take this call. What's the topic? Go ahead. 
Hi, um, about the animals with feelings and emotions, the Bible specifically forbids um, slaughtering a mother, a father, and a son on the same day. And it's because of the uh, emotional feelings that animals have towards their children. I thought that would be that, an no, that that is in the that's in the Jewish laws. Are you saying, Shelley? Yes, it's a specific law brought brought in the Bible. The Jews were so far ahead of the rest of the, the ancient the ancient Jews were thousands of years ahead of most people on the planet with regard to these sensitivities. And I stand by that statement. There is no other society that emerged in the history of the man, of mankind that was as cognizant and as reactive to uh, the lower animals in that regard. Am I correct about that? I know I am. Now, this is an interesting story about the kosher food laws. People think it's about, well, you can't eat shrimp, you can't eat pork, and that's because pork was dirty in the biblical times. There was no refrigeration. There were no preservatives, and you can't eat shrimp because it came from, like, sewers like in China today. That is not the reason you of the for the kosher food laws. I read a philosopher who wrote that the original kosher food laws were written, meaning ritual slaughter, which the Muslims follow through the halal slaughterhouses as well, was out of compassion for the animals. For example, it says you shall not use a, a dull knife. You shall not use a serrated knife. You have to use a sharp knife. Am I right about that, Shelley? That's correct. And now, here's a bigger thing to that. And it was not so much for the animal as it was to rein in the murderous impulses of mankind. During the slaughtering process, in other words, they didn't want man to get carried away with sadism, Shelley. And that's what the kosher food laws were written for. I, saw, I read that many years ago by a philosopher. Do you think that holds water? I think it holds a lot of water. And I think um, you're speaking very kindly and very nicely. And if you really want to know what Jewish and kosher food is all about, um, you had to be... Well, I, I don't really want to get into kashrut right now because it's a, it's a national audience. But, but Shelley, I hope I'm redeemed in the eyes of those who didn't like things I said about other things in the Bible. Let's leave it at that. And by the way, Shelley, if you're a religious man, would you be interested in reading my book, God, Faith, and Reason, or is that outside the can of your reading? Yeah. Okay. Yes or no? I, Wait, no, listen. I asked you a que I asked you a question. Would you be interested in reading my book, God, Faith, and Reason, as a religious man? I'm finishing your mystery thriller now. Um, the really See, good look, at, you gave me a Talmudic answer. You won't answer a question. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> you won't answer it. So are you afraid to have the book in your house? I will have it in the house, but I'm receiving it only if I will be able to um, have a rebuttal on things that I'm, I'm in disagreement with. I will write... There you, okay, you're, on, you're, up, you're up, you're up, you're up, you're up. If you find anything in God, faith, and reason that you disagree with, I would love for you and other religious people who read the book to call me. I'd love that. We'll have the most exciting November and December in the history of radio. Stay in the line, Shelley. And God, faith, and reason by Michael Savage goes out to you. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Great to have all the energy that you want all day long. Unfortunately, fatigue often gets in the way. You know that, even for everyday activities. And it seems to get worse every year. Am I right? Well, here's why. When you're 20, your body has a natural ability to maintain healthy circulation. You know that. What happens by 40? That ability decreases by half. Half. And that leaves you feeling draggy and tired. So what can you do to increase that youthful, natural circulation and fight fatigue? You drink Super Beats. Super Beats promotes the body's own natural ability to produce healthier circulation for increased energy and stamina all day long. Only Super Beats is made from beets grown to exacting standards, then concentrated into superfood crystals. So listen to me. If you want to increase your own natural energy, all you have to do is call 800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com with your first order. You're going to get another 30-day supply of Super Beats for free, plus indicator strips, to see how Super Beats is working for you and free shipping. So please call 1-800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com. Now, as this show and this hour comes to a conclusion, 
I'm going to end it in the way that I wanted to begin it. Before I woke up this morning, I had a phrase going around in my mind, and I didn't know where it came from. It was a dream, and I've shared my dreams with you before, such as the white owl, which I then painted, right? The phrase was the sterile bull. The phrase the sterile bull kept appearing in my subconscious in an actual dream. The sterile bull, the sterile bull. And I started to like hone in on it. What does this mean? And I'm asking you, the audience, I'm leaving you with a question mark. Professor Savage asks you, what do you think this symbolizes? Does it symbolize, does the phrase the sterile bull symbolize one of the following? The USA, the US Congress, the media, the president, or who? I don't know where it came from. I don't, ch I don't really question my subconscious. Whether I get nightmares, daymares, or happy dreams, I never fight with my subconscious because it's always right. And I don't want to crash into it like the Titanic. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It is The Savage Nation. Crazy every day, bigger than the day before. Madness. You can't catch a break. You can't catch a break. A week of uh, the Vegas story. A sweat job for three straight hours, uh, adrenaline rush. Then the fires, five straight days, adrenaline rush. I'm packing on weight here. I'm eating. I violate my diet. I'm eating steak now. Not hurting me, but I make up for it the next day with oatmeal and, the, you know, like I do the health food thing that I wrote about. So now I got this to wake up to another one. Who do you believe? Who do you believe? Who do you believe? Uh, Trump denies allegations that Rep. Wilson made about his call to the widow. Let us hear the president himself and his position first in 02. Didn't say what that congresswoman said. Didn't say it at all. She knows it. And she now is not saying it. I did not say what she said. And uh, I'd like her to make the statement again because I did not say what she said. I had a very nice conversation with the woman, with the wife who is sounded like a lovely woman, did not say what the congresswoman said, and most people aren't too surprised to hear what that. Truth, Mr. Uh, let, let her make her statement again, and then you'll she find out. That she, that you said this. Okay, let her make her statement again, and then you'll find out. Now, that's his side of the story. He says he didn't say what he allegedly said to the widow, the grieving widow, which is he knew what he signed up for, uh, you know, and still said, Again, even if he did say something like that, he did not mean it maliciously. That would be like saying to someone, to a, let's say um, an officer of law, a cop, dies and there's a funeral for him. And uh, the governor comes out there, and I've been at a funeral for a CHP officer. And what if the go governor were to say to the widow in a nice way, similar, something similar like, while Officer uh, whatever, Benjamin James knew what he signed up for, it's still a terrible tragedy. Would that be an evil thing to say? That would be like saying, okay, that's why we honor him. Because he knows every day that he goes out there when he puts on a, a vest that he may not come home that night. That's what he was saying. But, you know, given that the vermin in the media are evil, given that they are the devil's descendants, well, what do you think he should do? I'm asking you a question. It's simple. Now, we got to go to the play the other side. Dem Rep Frederica Wilson it's pretty sick what she says, but you'd expect that from a woman who wears a cowboy hat. Uh, as she's not, and she's not a cowboy. There's a st saying in Texas: she's wearing a ten-gallon hat, but she's eight gallons short. Is it something like that? I don't even know what it means because I'm from another. 
I don't know. What does that mean? She's wearing a 10-gallon hat, but she's 8 gallons short. Is there anyone from Dallas that, uh, listening to me on KLIF who can tell me what that means? It's a put-down. Well, in her case, she's wearing a 10-gallon hat, and she's 11 gallons short is what I would say. So here's Rep. Wilson putting down Trump in 03. This man is a sick man. Uh, he's cold-hearted, and he feels no pity or sympathy for anyone. This is a grieving widow, a grieving widow who is six months pregnant. This is a young woman. She's only 24 years old. She weighs maybe 110 weight. pounds. What does the weight have and to do with it? she has two other kids, two years old and six years old. And when she actually hung up the phone, she looked at me and said, he didn't even know his name. Now, that's the worst part. All right. That's not so bad. He's just cold-hearted and uh, pitiless and sympathyless. Other than that, she was very respectful to the president. But then you'd expect that from a Democrat uh, rep, Federico Wilson, a member of an esteemed caucus in Congress, the most esteemed nonpartisan caucus uh, the world has ever seen. But I, I'm, I'm going to a bigger point, which is what does he do now? He makes one w- wrong move here and it's all over. And I think he should stop. Per- my own opinion is do not invite her to the White House. Well, no, let me give you my opinion. You invite her and the other widows or mothers of the other fallen soldiers from uh, the Niger disaster. There were four men who died in that bungled raid. Now, that's another thing. There's the rest of the story, bungled raid. Has anyone talked about the bungled raid in Niger? This could wind up being, you listen to me on this one. I know you haven't heard this yet because I tend to go behind the layers like the onion. This is the onion story. I'm peeling. I'm peeling now. And I'm not, te- I'm not tearing. I'm peeling. Here's the story. Four special forces ops go to Niger to fight one of the Islamo-fascist vermin who are trying to now build encampments in Africa, and God forbid that spreads in Africa. The world would go up in flames. And uh, there's a bungled raid, and four of them get whacked, meaning they were either set up in an ambush, someone leaked, whatever. What are the details on that raid? We don't know. That's a bigger story than this you know, than this blow-up, not this guy's death. I'm not diminishing. Uh, Wilson admits she didn't hear the whole Trump phone. Oh! Oh, now the representative with the cowboy hat says she didn't hear the whole Trump call. Uh-huh. Let's hear 06. Let's hear the... Let's hear Cowboy. Well, I, I didn't hear the whole phone call, but I did hear uh, him okay. say, I'm, I'm sure he knew what he was signing up for, uh-huh, and, uh, uh-huh. but it still hurts. Well, of course, and, you're uh, grieving. I asked them to let me speak with him. Are and you the joking? the sergeant said, no, you can't speak with him. I said, but I want to speak with him because of I was you want to. when I heard that. Now, he's not going to talk to you. Who are you? You're a nobody, a nut with a cowgirl hat. So they're making a big thing here. You know, this guy died. He was a hero like the other three guys, like everyone who gives their life for the country. And they now have to soil his memory and soil the entire military, the presidency, and drag the nation through the mud because you know who they are. That's all. Let's go back to another point. Do you think Vegas and the fires are terrorism related? And why do you think so? Moreover, what are you doing to protect yourself and your family if we are under assault and the government's hiding it from us? Or do you think it's just conspiracy theories and there are perfectly reasonable explanations for Vegas? I don't know what that might be. And for these fires that keep breaking out, whether they be in the wine country, which are not over, by the way, the air where I live is horrible again. I'm choking here. I'm behind air conditioning. I can't bicycle. I can't go out. I'm not crying. I didn't have a fire, but the air stinks again in the San Francisco area. Fires broke out in the Santa Cruz area. Now there are brush fires in the Sausalito area, which is south. So, oh, they're all spontaneous, I recognize, because Jerry Brown knows that they're all as a result of global warming, and I know he tells the truth. But someone who I rely upon for almost ESP insights sent me an email and asked this question. Where are the autopsies on the victims in Las Vegas? Good question. Where are the autopsies on the victims? I guess in the same place that the Supreme Court justice who was found dead in a sleazy motel on the Mexican border uh, uh, is. Remember there was no autopsy? Oh, you forgot that one already? You forgot what happened? Oh, you don't even remember his name? 
You forgot his name already, the one who went to a sleazy motel on the border with Mexico and was found dead with a pillow over his face and there was no autopsy. Do you know that when a bum falls dead in the streets of any city in America, by law there must be an autopsy? Did you know that? And here was a Supreme Court justice under Barry Hussein Obama who died suspiciously with a pillow over his head in a sleazy motel on the Mexican border and there was no autopsy. He, his ashes were, he was burnt immediately. Mm, no government relationship there at all. They weren't just trying to stock the Supreme Court with another psycho lib from hell. No. No, he died spontaneously uh, while eating uh, a spaghetti and meatball dinner. So there was no autopsy when a Supreme Court justice dies in a sleazy motel. There's no autopsies that we, the dumb American people, can see about uh, from, uh, from Vegas. No, we don't, we don't have any right to them. Instead, we just have a right to watch the filth and the slime that is put out from the sewer pipe that runs from Hollywood to the minds of the world. And you wonder why traditionally religious people, like traditional Jews, don't watch movies or television, or why Muslims hate Hollywood and hate the filth that Hollywood's been pumping out into the world. Do you remember years ago I said to you, when we hear that the Muslim world is incensed at America because of this, because of that, and I said, no, no, it's because of the filth, the Hollywood sewer pipe. You can just as soon blame the filth purveyors like Harvey Weinstein. I told it to you then. I'll say it to you again. I will tell it to you again until you hear me. You think that the Muslim world is incensed only because of our geopolitical actions? You'd be mistaken to find out that many of them are quite rational and reasonable, and traditional Muslims are as offended as are traditional Christians and Jews by the filth that is being pummeled into the heads of, of the world by from the sewer pipe of Hollywood. How many times have I said the sewer pipe of Hollywood? You think I'm surprised by the by the human slug Weinstein's behavior? I'm not. I'm not offended by it because I expected it. I, I didn't go on. You look at the guy. You know what he is. Okay. So now we're coming up to the biggest stories, which is the lies of the media, the lies of the government, the Vegas shooting, and the fires in California. And I'll ask you again. Do you think Vegas and the fires are terrorism? If so, what are you doing to protect yourself and your family? You want to get real? Get real. Or if you don't believe in it, go the other way. We have people who say, no, it's not real. America's in very bad shape right now, despite the happy faces, despite the double talk from the mediaites. And I think the Harvey Weinstein scandal is part, of course, part of the mystique of the media lies remember they control never forget that those who are running the news business also run the movie business you, you mustn't ever forget that there was a time when the news business was separated from the movie and entertainment business and then they merged remember i warned you about beware the um interlocking corporate directorships that's an interesting statement because it used to be a, a watchword of the liberal left in the 60s I remember the 60s very well. There was a lot of wisdom in it, that statement in particular. Look into interlocking corporate directorships. So when you have the same titans who control movies and control the news, what do you think is going to happen when they don't want the news to go a certain way? Why, they're going to change it, or they're going to ignore it, or they're going to block it. Now you know why the truth teller, Michael Savage, is never seen on television. Now you know why a best-selling author is never seen on television. Now you know why truth tellers are rarely seen on television. I didn't say they're all liars, don't get me wrong. But there's only so far they can go. No, well, there's only so far I can go. You think I'm crazy? You think I want to go into areas that uh, I shouldn't venture? I do all the time. But only I can go so far, and then eventually there is quicksand. And do I have to tell you what happens when you step beyond the swamp into the quicksand? I think all you're going to do is look back upon the Supreme Court justice who died mysteriously in a sleazy motel on the Mexican border and there was no autopsy, no cover-up, no coverage by the media. I don't think you have to look any further than the reports of two shooters in Las Vegas uh, and such. And here in California, I'm telling you there's something very creepy and suspicious about these fires. We learned Portugal and Spain reported that the fires were set by Islamo-fascists. They said it was terrorism. 
Why is it that in Portugal and Spain they have a more honest press than we have here? How is it that backwards Portugal <laughs> and primitive Spain had an immediate report that the fires in their forests were set by ISIS? And we here in America are so stupid that we believe the fantasies of Rob Reiner and Harvey Weinstein? What do you think? You think Vegas and the fires are terrorism? And if so, are you ch have you changed your behavior? What are you doing to protect yourself and your family? Do you know if this is going to end tomorrow? I mean, you have any security that this is going to end tomorrow? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Better not appear with this widow publicly, never, because she'll do a, knee, a, a colon caper, Nick, and that's the end of the presidency. Are you telling me a snake, a snake like Anderson Cooper is going to let that go? you telling me a man who was born as the bad seed of his family, in my estimation, a man who inside his heart is uglier than Harvey Weinstein, who is such a masterful actor that he looks like a handsome, friendly guy, but inside probably has the soul of a Harvey Weinstein. You look at, you look at Wolf Blitzer. Nice, friendly guy, gray hair, inside a Harvey, a monster. I'm not talking about the women thing. I'm talking about the soul. You think they're going to ever let this go? They're, these are sick people. These are sick people who have destroyed themselves by thinking that attacking a president that they dislike is the news. It's not the news. It's a sickness. It's actually a sign of pathology, what they're doing. It's a mental disorder. Trump calls families of soldiers who were killed, blah, blah, blah. So he called them today. Okay, that's good. Now, what about the mission itself? We're hearing that there are four guys died with all Green Berets in a team of 12 Green Berets. But here, wait, here's the kicker. You ready? They were accompanying 40 Nigerian soldiers to meet with locals at a village close to Niger's border with Mali. They had driven to a local village and were walking to or from the meeting when they were ambushed by 50 fighters from ISIS in the Sahara Desert. Now... <laughs> The Nigerian platoon was nearby, but not with them. That means they were set up for the ambush by the Nigerian platoon. Pentagon officials have said Army Special Forces have carried out 29 previous missions like this one over the past six months without encountering any problems. Well, this time they did. It's exactly what's going on in Afghanistan, or did go on. It's called fragging. They're getting killed by these so-called friendly uh, forces they're fighting with. And whether that is preventable, I don't know. I'm not a military guy, but I don't trust them as far as I can throw a donkey. I don't say elephant because we know we don't trust people who are using elephant as a symbol. No, no, no. You, you're, work, you're working with Nigerian forces. You expect one of them not to be a member of the opposition. You're insane if you do that. So look, this is a bad situation. That's all. So they're fighting ISIS now in the greater Sahara. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's the last thing you want is them to take over Nigeria. Great oil-producing nation. If it falls in the hands of the Islamo-fascists, forget about it. Just forget about it. What else do we have for you on the Savage Nation? Oh, come on, I can't play this one. Oh, Jesus Campos was on the Ellen DeGenerate show. Right. I'm so not interested in that appearance. The only part of that story that's interesting to me when I heard that the missing guard from Vegas who was there at the talk, ran away, did not to do. Now he pops up and he goes on the Ellen DeGeneres show is that Megyn Kelly lost him. She was probably dying to get him. So the other girl in the media got him instead. That must kill her. Can you imagine what that did to Megyn? She's on a downslide, boy. It always ha happens to them every time. They overreach. They overreach. They think they're going to be network stars. They change their hairdos and they die. Savage. The president who said what he said to the widow of the fallen soldier who died with other special forces soldiers in Niger. Or do you believe the president, or do you believe the widow, or do you believe the woman in the big hat from the Congressional Black Caucus? 
I mean, it's a big question because this is a gigantic story that needs to be dealt with properly. So we're going to help the president by bypassing his amateurish communication staff, and we're going to talk amongst ourselves by asking this question and answering it. What can the president do to salvage the situation with the fallen soldier? Should he invite the widow to the White House? It's a very simple question, but it's a very complicated answer because there may not be a simple answer. Today, the president said he didn't say it. Today, the president said that the Democratic Congresswoman totally fabricated what I said to the wife of a soldier who died in action. And he said, and I have proof, sad. That's his favorite punchline, sad. So I'm asking, as I asked on Twitter, who do you believe? Who do you believe? Now, one veteran wrote this on my Twitter feed. He said, uh, he's a veteran. He said, I believe POTUS, but, I, but all veterans understand what we signed up for. Isn't that why we honor our veterans? I mean, he's right in a way. We don't honor them because they're wearing the uniform. We don't honor them for any other reason than we know they put their lives on the line for the country. So in the bigger sense, if Trump said something like this, he wasn't doing it in a derogatory manner. He was actually saluting the soldier when he said he knew what he signed up for, but it's always sad when it happens. If you take it in the context of the meaning of it, it was not insulting. But of course, listen to me. I'm an expert on visuals. I'm an expert on visuals. And one picture, one iconic photograph used by the vermin in the left-wing media turned the public against the war in Vietnam. And that iconic photograph was that of the half-naked Vietnamese girl running down. You remember the picture, if you were alive at the time? Half-naked Vietnamese girl running, running, running down a street in Vietnam, running from American troops or after a napalm attack. That was the end of the Vietnam War. And, of course, the left-wing vermin are very smart. Remember how smart the devil really is. The devil who has given us this sickness in our society, the poison of the Harvey Weinsteins, don't ever think they're stupid. Don't ever think that they're dumb. Don't ever think that they're not clever. Don't ever think they don't know what they're doing. The devil took that picture, which was false, by the way, and made that look like American troops had napalmed that girl on purpose. But it turned the American public against the Vietnam War. If one picture did it, it was that picture. So now we have the picture of an African-American widow weeping on the casket of her husband, Sergeant La David Johnson, who died in Niger. By the way, there were other soldiers uh, from the Special Forces. I know they don't count and they don't exist. Uh, but right now, he's the only one who we're talking about. There's a bigger question that you haven't heard about yet, and that is who leaked the picture of the casket and the widow, because if you remember correctly, during Obama, it was strictly forbidden for anyone to show any pictures of a casket coming in. Did you know that? Somebody in the military leaked this picture, and since I, Michael Savage, am the truth teller of the American media, let me tell you what I think is going on, but I'll get to that in a minute. I want to know what you think here. When I say to you, who do you believe, the president or the Democratic Congress fool with a cowboy hat? Now, um, here's the story. Should he invite the widow to the White House? Absolutely not. If his amateur staff, who came from selling cosmetics, uh, tell him to bring the widow to the White House, they will destroy the presidency in the, immediately, and I'll tell you why. Because what the widow will do is go on a knee in front of the president next to the American flag. That'll be the end of the presidency. That'll be like invi inviting Colin Pimpleneck to the White House to express his opinion. He'll get on a knee. You don't invite her. No, I'm sorry. The worst mistake they could make would be to invite the widow, the grieving widow, to the White House. The worst. Because she will absolutely go on the knee. No, you can't do that. You got to be very careful here. Because even if the president is telling the truth and he says, and I have proof that the Democratic congresswoman with the stupid cowboy hat totally fabricated what he said to the wife of the soldier who died in action, what is he going to do now? Release that tape and prove that he's now taping everyone on phone calls? That's not going to help him either. So he's in a pretty difficult spot right now. And I want to know what you think he should do. If Trump wants to put this to, to end it, he's either got to stop talking about it, 
and shut up that that madman, the worst of the man. That, by the way, the new devil of the media is Anderson Cooper. You know, there was a long while I knew he was a sick leftist. I, I didn't care. He was a nice-looking guy. didn't bother me. It's as though the portrait of Dorian Gray is coming out of Anderson Cooper's face. He's becoming ugly. And the worst thing for a pretty boy is to become ugly. The worst thing for a descendant of a family like his uh, is to become ugly. It's like the portrait of Dorian Gray. He cannot change the fact that his face is starting to show him for what he actually is. He is taking pleasure in his deviousness of attacking the country and the president on a regular basis. That's number one. Now, number two, there's only one way out of this, which is to invite all of the uh, (laughs) four guys died. You invite the widows if they were all married or the lady friend or the mothers, and you have a ceremony for all of them. Now, if this lady who's uh, hurt by what Trump allegedly said is there and she goes on a knee or whatever, then she makes a spectacle of herself, and that then becomes her problem. But I'm not a PR agent. I don't work for the president. You want to do Jesus Campos on the Ellen DeGeneres show? Are you joking? That's a story. He said nothing. It was a big nothing, a nothing. The big Lebowski. It was like a bowling ball that missed all 10 pins. So it doesn't matter that uh, that Megyn Kelly missed it. Hawaii Dem Senator Hirono says Trump has no moral core. That's funny coming from a Congress. What? Let me tell you something. Okay, let me say nothing about it. Let, uh, let's listen to this now. Hawaii Democrat Senator Hirono. Can I tell you something? Hawaii is the most corrupt state in the union, next to California. There's nothing more corrupt than that welfare state. It is the most corrupt state in the land. They sit around watching coconuts fall off the trees and collect welfare. And then the people who work, they hate. They call them derogatory names. There are more cars in Honolulu than there are people. And yet they they write bill after bill about global warming and they do nothing about it. Crazy. Should the president invite the widow? No. She'll embarrass him. Should he invite all the widows or the, or the, yeah, maybe. Maybe he can let it go. Can he let something go? Is it possible for once he can just move on? This now has to become a major story now for six years because of the snakes and the lizards uh, in the media, right? That's it, the soldier story. Trump says Dem rep fabricated account of call to soldiers. Widow has proof. I don't want to see the proof. I don't want to hear it. There's no recordings, according to the Drudge Report, zero. No recordings. Three dead, two injured in Edgewood, Maryland workplace shooting. That'll be swept aside because he doesn't look like Timothy McVeigh. Vegas survivor who died suddenly had planned group to expose cover-up. You don't want to do that again, right? ISIS in the Congo. Video calls jihadists to new turf in Central Africa. Saudi Arabia. Hundreds of mysterious ancient stone structures discovered on lava domes. I'm interested in that one that you can still find things years later. Uh, But I've studied it in great detail. Not not great. I've studied it in some detail. And these ancient stone structures look like animal traps to me. I don't think that they were like aliens that came from the Bronx in, in, uh, you know, and like like built a stone wall and then went back to Tremont Avenue. I don't believe that. Right away, it's like aliens came down and built the stone structures and were just discovering them. Ooh, The aliens are amongst us. Well, they are. Look at Anderson Cooper. Aliens are amongst us. They're not human. These are are not full humans. These are like half humans, most of these people. They hate the country with a viciousness that's hard to imagine. A country that gives a man or a woman such a fortune, like a Jane Fonda. Her whole life is a life of luxury, happiness, uh, worship, and she spits on the country. Can you figure this out? Yes, I can. There's an answer to that one, too. And it fits neatly. Liberalism is a mental disorder. Whenever you see something that they say or do that doesn't make sense to you, you plug that in. Liberalism is a mental disorder. You know, but what's really working at me is why is this this hobby thing so big so fast? You know, we know this has gone on, which is not justifying it. He's a disgusting pig. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm from the exact neighborhood, more or less, where he came from. That same area of Queens, okay, regionally, very specifically, I know the type. I went to school with the type, a junior high school, high school. There was a type like that in everyone's crowd, a brutish, piggish guy 
a bull vine who pushed his way forward no matter what. He didn't care who he stepped on. He is a stereotype of the worst of my people. He is the type of my people that makes people hate my people, let my people go. You know what I'm saying? So let's not be, uh, you know, confused about this. That's one of the reasons there's been such a piling on is because of the fact that, I mean, it's very hard for me to tell you this because you're not going to buy it. Yes, he's a pig. Yes, he did all those things, I would assume. Yes, it's been his modus operandi, M.O., from the get-go. It's how he did the movie thing. It's what he did. He was a pig. He's sick in the head. Totally sick in the head in my estimation. I have to say, if what they are saying he did, he did. He's sick in the... This guy is in the head, between the ears, zero. Mush. Ruined as a child. But why do you think Harvey became the poster boy? Now, you could say because he was the most egregious example. And his the face fits the crime, the alleged accusations. The face fits, right? Like, here is the ultimate stereotype or caricature of the ugly fill in the blank. I can't say the word. The ugly uh, man, the ugly producer, but that's not what I'm thinking. You know, you know where my head's at. This guy fits a certain stereotype that was very prominent in German propaganda posters in the 1930s, by the way. And a lot of this is related to the same exact sentiment. And I'm speaking around it because the minute I go there, you're going to say I'm wrong. Now, I'm setting up, you know, an, an argument here, and I'm not asking you to even comment, but I know things. And I'm telling you why the pile on is happening. Because he fits the bill. He fits the bill. Uh, Woody Allen fears a witch hunt of every guy in office who winks at a woman. Filmmaker Woody Allen told the BBC that he's sad for Harvey Weinstein and fears the allegations against the disgraced movie mogul may lead to a witch hunt against men. The whole Harvey Weinstein thing is very sad for everybody involved, said Allen, whose son Ronan Farrow reported claims from several women alleging Weinstein raped them. Woody went on and said, tragic for the poor women that were involved, sad for Harvey that his life is so messed up. He added, you also don't want it to lead to a witch hunt atmosphere, a Salem atmosphere, where every guy in an office who winks at a woman is suddenly having to call a lawyer to defend himself, Alan said. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. What else is in the news? Uh, Weinstein's gone. Is he in rehab? He has as much chance of being cured of his addiction uh, as I do of giving up French fries and spaghetti for the rest of my life. It's not that I eat them every day, but I'm telling you the truth. I'm addicted to French fries and spaghetti. I try to avoid them, but I fail. Same with Weinstein. He's not going to... There's such a thing. There's no such thing as sex addiction. I read an expert's opinion on it. It is total crap. There's no such thing as sex addiction. That was invented. Oh, I can't help myself. I'm an addict. You, you can help yourself. You don't want to. That's the whole thing. Sex addict. What does it actually mean? Nothing. There's no such thing as sex addiction. The only people who admit to it are those who get caught and have to go to treatment where they meet people who are also trapped and have to go to treatment, and they meet each other, and they have, then they have sex. Where better to meet someone who is a sex maniac than in a, sex, a quote, sex addiction a classroom? Nowhere. It's the best pickup place on the planet, I heard. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Quebec, Quebec bars people in face coverings from public services. <laughs> in Quebec? They're not letting them come in with burkas on? That's funny. Why not? Isn't the burka a superior costume for a modern woman? You don't have to show your... Well, if you're Ruth Bader Ginsburg, yes. In her case, I'm in favor of burkas. I know they wear a black robe on the Supreme Court. Can we start a fund, like a GoFundMe page... For a burqa, a full body covering for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, because I personally get sick when I look at her. Why is that woman still on the Supreme Court? Boy, I hope Trump gets to put four more on that court. But we're yet to see what they're going to do. I told you that. I know many of you think that um, the new one's going to be very conservative. I see a Roberts in the making. I don't know yet. He's, uh, they're, they're waiting. They're waiting back. MSNBC Mado jumps back the first place. Oh, she beat Hammer. Hmm. <laughs> Well, Hammer, you know, he overplayed the Trump thing. That's why Hammer fell and Mad Cow jumped. 
you can't over associate with the president and be seen as an independent person in the media. How many times can you have Newt Gingrich on as a guest? And now, direct from the Beltway, the man who's against the Beltway, it's Newt Gingrich. No. So I don't do guests. Most guests are boring. No, you, you don't want to watch guests. But you're only calling about the widow. I said, what do you want to do about that? Savage Academy Awards, you don't want to do that. All right, let's take some calls. Let's get some calls on what Trump should do to salvage the widow situation. Okay? What should he do? I don't know if I want to go back to the Trump with the widow. Do you want me to do this? I'll turn it off. I'm not interested in it. I'm not getting worked up over it anymore. It's too many times I feel like I've hit the, the plunger and the, the che- che- Cheerios have come out. I don't want to talk about the, the uh, dust up over the widow phone call. You know, already, move on already. Now, as this show comes to a conclusion, I'm going to end it in the way that I wanted to begin it. Before I woke up this morning, I had a phrase going around in my mind, and I didn't know where it came from. It was a dream, and I've shared my dreams with you before, such as the white owl, which I then painted, right? The phrase was the sterile bull. The phrase the sterile bull kept appearing in my subconscious in an actual dream. The sterile bull, the sterile bull. And I started to like hone in on it. What does this mean? And I'm asking you, the audience, I'm leaving you with a question mark. Professor Savage asks you, what do you think this symbolizes? Does it symbolize, does the phrase the sterile bull symbolize one of the following? The USA, the US Congress, the media, the president, or who? I don't know where it came from. I don't, ch- I don't really question my subconscious. Whether I get nightmares, daymares, or happy dreams, I never fight with my subconscious because it's always right. And I don't want to crash into it like the Titanic. This is the Savage Nation. Be here. Savage.